Welcome to our sixth grade recognition. Please stand to the pledge of the flag. Pledge of allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United, United States of America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now a few words from Mrs. Hazen. Thank you, Rory and Connor. My name is Mrs. Hazen, and on behalf of Ms. Grezicheski and myself, I'd like to welcome you to our unprecedented sixth grade recognition and moving up ceremony. We have dubbed this year's sixth grade class as our sixth grade superheroes. Our sixth graders have handled this situation swimmingly since March 16th. With so much to look forward to as sixth graders in the McKenzie School, this evening being paramount, they have been true superheroes, knowing that a traditional ceremony was just not possible at this time. They are our superheroes, and as you will find out a bit later, they do wear capes. Before I turn this over to Mr. Krebs for the official welcome, I would like to point out a few bright sides to this virtual situation that we have found ourselves in. We are not squirming in our seats right now in 95 degree gymnasium. We did not have to search for a parking spot. There was no need to race around to find your son a belt or the perfect pair of sandals for your daughter. You all know exactly where all of the emergency exits are. And finally, and most importantly, you all have a front row seat. Enjoy the evening. And now I present Mr. Krebs, our elementary school principal, followed by Bray Goodell and Avery Moscatello with the sixth grade address. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. That might be the last time that you hear that from me because you're not in the school anymore and it's not a Friday, um, but we are celebrating our moving up ceremony with you virtually. It has not been an easy year. I'd like to thank our parents for being partners in your child's development this year and finishing out the end of the year the way that we did virtually. Our uh, teachers have really worked hard. Uh, our staff, our superintendent, Dr. Morgano, our board of education, everybody's come together to close out our school year and hopefully make it the best successful year that you've ever had. I know that it's not been easy. We haven't been able to say our goodbyes um, say how proud we are in person, give you the hugs and the accolades uh, that you well deserve, but uh, we're going to put together something virtually, do our best to recognize all of those academic achievements and your day that you have here is moving up. And I'd like to welcome you to our ceremony. I'd like to wish you a great summer. Um, high five to each and every one of you. So have a great summer, a great year. I wish you well when you move up to the junior, senior high school. Have a great summer. Good evening and welcome to our virtual version of our sixth grade recognition. We thank our families for the hard work and support given to us throughout the years and especially these last three months. You have supported us unconditionally and we truly appreciate your efforts. Historically, the address given by the students is a walk down memory lane about all the classroom teachers they have had. Before we get on to that, we'd like to start out by thanking all of the people of our McKenzie School that are not our classroom teachers. We would like to say a very special thank you to Mr. Dorcas and Adam for keeping our building looking good and functioning properly, to the bus drivers and monitors for bringing us here and home safely each day, to Deputy Stevenson for keeping us safe all day. To Mrs. Moscatello, Ms. Kurtzman, Mrs. Avado, and Mrs. Coney for greeting us at the door each morning. To Mrs. Decker, Mrs. Halleck, and Mrs. Raymond for preparing delicious meals each day. To Mrs. Drake for keeping an eye on us in the lunchroom. To Mrs. Heisler for making sure that we all get safely on the bus at the end of each day. To Mrs. Anderson, Mrs. Labuda, and Mrs. Costa for seeing to it that our school days run smoothly and for making sure we know who's having a birthday. To Mrs. Whitney for taking care of our bumps, bruises, coughs, and sniffles. To Mrs. Brown for working in our classrooms for years helping students. To Mrs. Martell and Mrs. Ryman for bringing smiles and enthusiasm to all whom they encounter. To Mrs. Morsh, Mrs. England, Mrs. Rufino, Ms. McWilliams, Mrs. Roeder, and Mrs. Labella for giving us those extra opportunities to make ourselves our best selves. 
to Mrs. Guerrera for helping us become better readers and for making the sixth grade recognition special by providing the graduation extras. To Teddy, Paul, and Manny for reminding us to clean up after ourselves and for keeping our school clean. To Mr. Keese for organizing field days of the past, for teaching us online yoga and workouts. To Mrs. Bishak for allowing us to be a part of Battle of the Books and the Cross Country Reading Challenge and for signing us out at the end of the day with Mrs. Tice. To Mrs. Gersten for providing multiple opportunities for us to participate in art contests and for displaying our work. To Mrs. Schultz for teaching us band and chorus, for helping many of us prepare for all county, for making Frozen Junior a reality, and for taking us to see the Broadway play of Frozen. And finally, Mr. Krebs reminds us every day to work hard be nice and have a great day. Now, on to our journey through elementary school. On the first day of our half day pre-K, I think most of us have to admit we were pretty terrified to leave our parents. Our teachers' names were Mrs. Williams and Mrs. Tusa. Every day we had what seemed like a gourmet meal of milk, packaged cheese, and goldfish. Everyone thought it was the best. We made a model of a germ that year. We were taught how to wash our hands often, too. It's like they were fortune tellers and could see the future. Pre-K was the first year we experienced Star Lab. It was cool that we got to take off our shoes, but the loud fan and darkness made it a little scary. In the end, it was great, and still one of our favorite things to experience this year. Now, on to the next grade, kindergarten. Our teachers were Mrs. Lombardi and Miss Davis. Miss Perilla was our helper teacher that year. Around Halloween, we had ghoulish snacks of eyeballs and brains that turned out to be grapes and spaghetti. At St. Patrick's Day, we returned from lunch to discover that leprechauns had trashed our classroom. We saw the green glittery footprints they had left behind. We had a scavenger hunt that day too. Overall, kindergarten was a great experience. Next stop, first grade. Our teachers were Miss Robertson and Mrs. Van Haek. We felt very grown up. We learned how to read and write and complete sentences. We were able to help our teacher and hold the pointer when we were the helper bee of the day. That made us feel very grown up and important. Every morning, we sung a song for counting the days of the week and another song for teaching us the months of the year. We still know those songs. We went to a really cool fire museum and learned how to dial 911 and also learned how to put out a fire. First grade was really cool. Next, we move on to second grade. Mrs. Counts and Mrs. Mohan were our teachers. Mr. LaFoot was our helper teacher that year. There was a clip chart in the room to encourage us to well behave. Our behavior allowed us to receive prizes. This was the first year of real homework. It made us feel grown up. We learned how to regroup when subtracting and could not wait how to multiply. That that year, we also went to a really co cool place called Bushkill Falls for our field trip. It was fun to go hiking, see waterfalls, and eat a picnic lunch with our friends. Second grade was awesome. In third grade, we finally moved up into the intermediate wing. We were very excited to be in the big kid wing. Our teachers were Mrs. Fine and Mrs. B.W. Third grade was the first year we learned to write in cursive, and then we had to always write in cursive. <laughs> We learned about immigrants coming to the United States through Ellis Island. For our field trip that year, we went to the Franklin Mineral Museum. We learned about different rocks, especially when we put them under a light to find out their classification. When we we went into a big room and they turned all when we went into a big room and they turned off all the lights, we saw all the rocks in the room that were neon bright neon colors. It was super cool. It was time for fourth grade. Our teachers were Mrs. Trotta and Mrs. Shutt. Our work was rewarded with a happy chappy. A happy chappy is when a dot of good smelling chapstick is rubbed on our papers, leaving behind a great smell on the paper. It was so great to get that happy chappy. We were given smarties to make us smarter, and they really worked. That year, we also had the opportunity to visit the Roebling Bridge and visit the Zane Green Museum for our field trip. At the end of the year, we made bear books. We were able to color the cover of these books and then ask our classmates to write encouraging comments on the pages. We still have them. 
In fifth grade, we had Mr. Dunker and Mrs. B.W. as our teachers and Mr. Dun as our teachers. In Mr. In Mr. Dunker's class, we had a bean jar that was used to encourage good behavior. When we were good, we, rece we received beans. And when the jar became full, we had an ice cream party. We must have been a good class because we had many ice cream parties. We all loved to hear stories from Mr. Dunker and his time in the army when he was a paratrooper. Sometimes he would even act them out. In Mrs. B.W.'s class, we read and read and read. She had so many great books for us to read. We also were able to go on an amazing field trip to the Liberty Science Center. It was all paid for by the PTA, and it was amazing. At the end of the year, we were able to go to the Scranton Coal Mines. We rode down so far into the mines, it was dark, cold, wet, and a little weird smelling. Some of us were also able to go camping in Gettysburg and listen to Mr. Dunker share his amazing knowledge of the Civil War. Finally, finally, we have reached sixth grade the end of our elementary school journey. We were really excited to be in sixth grade because we were now the old, oldest kids in the building. Our teachers, our teachers are Miss Hazen and Mrs. G. We went to Storm King Mountain Art Center that featured amazing art, <laughs> art sculptures. As sixth graders, we sang the birthday song to everyone. We, learned hap we earned happy tickets that could be used as a chance to win prizes. We built egg car racers, and it was a great year. We had parties with cakes and Capri Suns frequently, and they told us they told us that this year would be our fastest year ever in the elementary school, and they were right. Right up until March 16th, when it all came to a screeching halt. We learned that we would not be able to return to school, and we were sad and scared. We knew very soon that we were not in this alone, and Miss G and Mrs. Hazen set up a Google Hangout for us so we could talk to each other, have virtual birthday parties, participate in scavenger hunts, hunts, and play bingo and Pictionary. That made it better. One Friday, they even came to our houses and dropped off a gift book they made for us and happy bags with capes in them, telling us that we are the sixth grade superheroes and we do wear capes. We had some great experiences at Mackenzie and we know that we are ready to move on and face the new adventures at the junior senior high school and we can't wait thank you now we would like to share a special presentation with all of our families <laughs>
Hi, I'm back to you again. I am here to present our presidential awards. And uh, they also come with a letter that comes from the President of the United States. He has signed it. So each of our award recipients will receive this letter. And I'd like to read this to you at this time. He says, congratulations to the recipients of the 2020 President's Education Award. Over the past year, the individuals who have earned this distinguished honor have exhibited exceptional work ethic and determination. Our nation will soon look to these future leaders for guidance, and I am confident that they will continue to build a stronger and more prosperous future for our great country. The First Lady joins me in applauding the educators, administrators, parents, and other community leaders who have been there every step of the way to encourage and uplift these bright young men and women. As these talented students pursue their dreams and passions, we send our best wishes for continued success. Keep up the great work, Donald Trump. So our award recipients for this year for our presidential awards are Rory Brady, Madison Daw, James Dearman, Marissa Gotchenauer, Bray Goodell, Brianna McCann, Peyton McDaniel, Avery Moscatello, Connor Ronaldo, Jillian Smith, Mark Smith, Tabitha Smith, Claudia Wasaki. Congratulations uh, on your award, your presidential award. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over for our PTA awards, and they uh, are being presented by Canio Loretto. When I was elected president of the PTA, I was most excited for this part of the job, celebrating you, our students. And even though I'm disappointed that we can't all be together in person up there on that stage, it does not at all minimize how very proud I am to honor each one of you on behalf of our PTA. And even though this school year didn't go exactly how we planned, I will remind you that your character, who you are, has certainly been shaped by how you have met and how you continue to meet the challenges that this year presented to you. I know it hasn't always been easy, and you may not see it now, but I guarantee you that you will emerge stronger because of it. Each year, our PTA presents scholarships to 10 students from the exiting sixth grade class. I would like to begin by awarding the following students who carried the highest averages in their classrooms. From Ms. G's class, Marissa Gockenauer, Peyton McDaniel, and James Dearmond. From Mrs. Hazen's class, Madison Daw, Avery Muscatello, and Rory Brady. The most improved student in Ms. G's class is awarded to Brianna McCann, and in Ms. Hazen's class, Anthony Boyce. Finally, each year we ask the special area teachers to choose one student per class as the most all-around student. This year they selected Mason Tice from Ms. G's class and Tabitha Smith from Mrs. Hazen's class. Congratulations to each of you and really to the entire sixth grade class for all of your hard work and accomplishments.
I miss you very much. School is not the same without kids in it. Buildings are empty and chairs are in the hallway and I hope in September we'll be back and I'll be able to watch you grow and interact once again. Today is a momentous day for you. You're moving from primary grades to the secondary grades. The work will be a little tougher and you'll put in a little bit more time at home on homework but you are moving toward becoming an Eldred graduate. Today, we're celebrating your six or seven or eight years, depending on if you went to preschool, years of work, and all the efforts your parents and teachers put in to bring you to this point. I want you to know that when you're here in Eldred, whether you're at McKenzie or at a junior senior high school, I have an office and I want you to stop by and say hello from time to time. And certainly if you have a problem that you think you need my help with, you just stop by and we'll take care of it. And now I want to recognize your parents and your guardians, aunts and uncles, sisters, brothers, and especially your teachers who brought you to this point. This is a unique time and life may be a little different going forward, but you made it and I'm proud of you. And now one last look at Mackenzie Superhero 6th grade. Take care.